Daddy, what you doing? What you doing, little buddy? Are you gonna come back down again? No, you're gonna run right away? Okay. This is the bucket that I use for fruit and veggie scraps that I keep in the kitchen. And when it's full, I bring it over to these two metal cook pots. And then when those are full, I uh, used to take them down to the old pallet compost bins. But now that Tyler has built me a new set of composting bins, I'm gonna take it down there today. And the story behind these metal cook pots is that I used to have plastic buckets that I put the, the food waste into. But we have a squirrel around here and he ended up gnawing right through it. So I went and got another plastic bucket and he chewed right through that one too. So I got some metal buckets and I keep rocks on the lids. But I don't know. Earlier this year, I caught the squirrel messing around in the old compost bins. And so he's just gonna raise hell regardless, I think. The buckets for my kitchen scraps are both full. So one chore I have to get done today is take those down to the compost bins. Okay, let's head down to the compost bins. I'll set you guys up so you can see how I do it. All right. There we go. Let's take a minute to look at my favorite composting book. The Humanure Handbook. I actually used to use this composting system when Tyler and I lived in Port Townsend, Washington, and we didn't have a regular toilet, so I used to compost our poop. I don't do that anymore, but um, his theories are really good. He talks about composting myths, and one of those is about turning the compost pile. Finally, turning compost piles in cold climates can cause them to lose too much heat. It is recommended that cold climate composters turn less frequently, if at all. And the way he sets up the system, he recommends using two composting bins minimum, one to fill and lead to age, and another to fill while the first is aging. And you want to start the compost pile by putting at the very bottom an 18 inch layer of hay or straw, grass clippings, leaves, and or weeds. And then you take your bucket of kitchen scraps or whatever and dump it in the center of the pile. And then you cover it again with straw, hay, weeds, or leaves. And it causes air to become trapped in the developing compost pile, making physical turning of the pile for aeration unnecessary. And uh, these bins take a lot of materials, amazing. Um, he says filling the first bin should take a year. That's how long it takes us, a family usually of four with a lot of visitors. And then at the end of the year, you cover it with a real thick layer of straw leaves or grass clippings and you wait for a year, start into the next bin, start using the next bin. He says when the second chamber is nearly full, a year later, the first one can begin to be emptied onto the garden beds. And then he talks about um, moisture, compost moisture. First, compost requires a lot of moisture. Compost piles are not inclined to drain moisture unless they're in a he very heavy rain. Most rainwater is absorbed by the compost, but in heavy rainfall areas, a roof or cover can be placed over the compost pile at appropriate times in order to prevent leaching. So what I did with the old pallet composting bins is I had tarps at the top you know, so they could be pulled aside. But what I mostly did was I just, you know, collected rainwater in a bucket beside and I just tossed a bunch of water in there. Um, so I just added the water. With these new composting bins, you know, they have a roof on them and so, and I don't have really easy access to water to dump in there. So it makes it a little bit more challenging. 
And let's see here. So let's take a look at their picture of their compost bins. Nothing there. So yeah, that's my favorite composting book. I'm gonna go ahead and pitchfork this uh, cover waste aside. These bins are way too big for this little kitchen waste dump. I think maybe what I'll do is I'll just put it on one side and then do another side the next time and switch off. I, I don't know. I need to get some water in here too because it's just, you know, it needs a lot of water since this is covered up with a roof. I've got all my food scraps down here, so I'm going to throw them into the bin here. And I think I'm going to put them on this side. Bucket of stuff. More bucket of stuff. And got the dandelions and the kale. Pull this paper out of the bottom here. I'm going to go over to the swamp and get some water. Built this handy dandy set of stairs going down here to the swamp. And then I kind of straightened out, got myself a little path. Yeah, if this was deep, that'd be pretty handy, wouldn't it? swamp is not very deep. I'm tempted to deepen it so I can only kind of scoop these shallow buckets of water. Okay we got the equivalent of about maybe two full buckets of water in there and I'm going to move all this uh, shredded cardboard kind of over into this area and cover this area up Just for something like that. And what the hell, I'm going to throw a few buckets on top of this cardboard too. Okay, got a couple buckets of water. Wash that in here. I'm going to just top this off with some more shredded cardboard just so the birds won't get interested. So I'm just going to clean these uh, little pots out. little squirrel. That's a jar that Tyler put out. It's a glass jar. There he is on the, on the top under the tree. Ah, oh, he's so acrobatic. Oh boy. So then he stuffed the whole jar full of moss. There's sunflower seeds in it, and I think he stuffed it full of moss so nobody could um, steal it from him or something. <laughs> 